Welcome to Lesson 6D, Angular Momentum Fixed Control Volume. In this lesson, we'll derive and discuss the angular momentum equation for a fixed control volume. We'll look at the various moments acting on a control volume and do an example problem. As we did with other conservation laws, we start with the Reynolds transport theorem for a fixed control volume. Remember, this is our link between the system and the control volume. Here we let capital B be H, the angular momentum vector, which is some moment arm R cross product with M V, where V is the velocity vector. Little b is always B over M, so that's just R cross V. The result is given here, where we've put the relative velocity here, just in case you want to do some moving control volume problem. But those are beyond the scope of this lesson. Let's look at the terms. This first term is the sum of all external moments acting on the control volume. The second term is the time rate of change of the angular momentum of all the contents within the control volume. And the third term is the net flow rate of angular momentum out of the control volume surface by mass flow. As we did previously for mass, energy, and momentum, we simplify this term for well-defined inlets and outlets. I'll drop the subscript R, where we're also considering only fixed control volumes from now on. Here's the result. The second term is the same, but the third term here is written as summations over outlets minus inlets. As I've pointed out previously, the signs take care of themselves at outlets V and N are nearly in the same direction, and therefore these are positive terms, and at inlets they're negative terms. Unlike the previous cases, we can't really define an angular momentum flux correction factor. That's because in general we're taking a moment about some point, so we draw the moment arm vector r, and we have to take the cross product of that with m dot v. Usually the cross-sectional length or diameter of this outlet is small compared to r, and a correction factor would have to include r through this integral, which would get very complicated and be different for every problem. So we're just going to ignore any kind of correction factor here. I've labeled the terms. This is the net moment or torque acting on the control volume by external means. This is the rate of flow of angular momentum out of the control volume by mass flow. And this is the same thing, but into the control volume at inlets. We also drop the unsteady term. We'll only consider steady problems here. For further simplification, we're generally talking about moments in one plane, in this case around this axis that points out of the page. So we can turn this into a scalar equation. When we're analyzing about this axis, r cross m dot v will also be a moment about that same axis. So the scalar equation becomes sigma m equals sigma out r m dot v minus sigma in r m dot v. This is our most useful or workhorse equation for angular momentum type problems. As I showed here, r is the shortest distance or the distance at 90 degrees to the outlet or inlet velocity vector. The same holds true for forces. By convention, counterclockwise moments are positive. Using the right hand rule, we're in this plane of the page counterclockwise moments about that point or line coming out of the page are positive. Let's do one simple example. This is example 6-8 of the Chang'e Symbola textbook. We have water coming from underground through a pipe, an elbow, and an extension, and the flow comes out horizontally. We give some dimensions and weights. This pipe is anchored to this concrete base. We want to calculate the bending moment acting at the base of the pipe, which is point A. Here are our assumptions and approximations. The flow is steady. Since this is a jet exiting into the air, the gauge pressure at the outlet is zero. The pipe diameter is small compared to the moment arm, so we can just use average values of radius and velocity at the outlet. First we pick a control volume. A wise control volume would cut through that point A where we want to find the moment, and we go along the outside of the pipe, cutting through the outlet. Since this pressure is atmospheric, we don't need to consider pressure forces. They all cancel out. Another way of thinking of this is to do everything in terms of gauge pressures, and then the pressure around this entire control volume is zero in terms of gauge pressure, except for this pressure, P1, but that does not contribute to any kind of a moment around point A. We calculate the mass flow rate, rho cross-sectional area times V. We get our result in kilograms per second. We were given the weight of the water and the pipe per meter, so we calculate this total weight which acts at a distance of R1 from the center line of the vertical pipe. If this pipe were longer, W would act further to the right. Here's our result in Newtons. We use our workhorse equation to find MA. This sigma M term on the left represents moments acting on the control volume. 
That would include moments caused by this weight, for example. The terms on the right are moments due to angular momentum. Probably the most difficult part of these kinds of problems is getting the signs correct. At an outlet, for example, here, the outflow of angular momentum is in the clockwise direction. And keep in mind our convention that counterclockwise moments are positive. For our problem, the left-hand side becomes ma minus r1 times the weight with the negative sign included because this moment caused by the weight about point A is clockwise. On the right, there's only one inlet, but since point A is in the middle of that inlet, it contributes nothing to this moment, so that term goes away. There is an outlet with some m dot and some v and a moment arm r2 about point A. Since it's an outlet, this is positive, in this case in the clockwise direction. So we include a negative sign here since all our moments are considered positive counterclockwise. Again, this is the most difficult part of the problem, getting the signs correct. We know intuitively that this jet is going to cause a counterclockwise moment on this pipe about point A, but the actual angular momentum flow rate out of the control volume is in the clockwise direction, which means we need a negative sign in our equation which deals with counterclockwise moments as positive. Putting it all together, we get this equation, ma minus r1w equal minus r2 m dot v2. The rest of the problem is just solving for ma, from here we get ma equal r1w minus r2 m dot v2, and we plug in the numbers and get our answer for ma. Notice that it's negative, which means our assumed direction for moment ma, which was counterclockwise or positive mathematically, was incorrect. The actual moment is clockwise, implying that in the tug of war between this weight causing a clockwise moment and this jet causing a counterclockwise moment on the pipe, the jet wins. Because the signs can get confusing, I recommend writing the answer as ma equal 82.5 newton meters clockwise. This moment is acting on the pipe. In other words, the concrete base must apply a clockwise moment on the pipe to counteract the excess moment caused by the exit stream. Finally, since the weight and the jet moments are kind of fighting each other, there will be a weight of that pipe where its moment will just balance the moment of the jet. We want to find that weight such that ma would be zero. In other words, there's no net moment at the base of this pipe. We want to solve for length L of the horizontal pipe that causes that moment to vanish. We use the same equation here but set ma equals zero and we solve for length L. Plugging in the numbers, we get 1.55 meters. Going back to the diagram, we see that by making this horizontal length of pipe longer, the moment arm of the weight moment is increased, and at the calculated length, the counterclockwise moment caused by this jet and this moment arm will be balanced by the weight and this moment arm, rendering MA zero. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.